and thank you for joining us for another episode of Fort Worth Roots. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Pouring Glory. Pouring Glory is just off South Main Street and I-35, one block north of Rosedale. Pouring Glory is a growler refilling station that serves craft beer and award-winning food with live music. That's 1001 Bryan Avenue. And thank you to our sponsors over at Pouring Glory. More information about our sponsors at the very end of this show, along with our events and other things we got going on here at the Fort Worth Roots Podcast. This coming Saturday, June 24th, starting at 11 o'clock, we will actually be out at Pouring Glory for our first networking event. We're inviting the entire DFW uh, population to come out. If you have a business, if you're a musician, a podcaster, an artist, if you have anything at all to promote, come out with us. We'll have the roadcaster set up, and we already have some people that have scheduled a hard time uh, to record with us, but uh, when you get there, we'll have a list for you. You can sign up on saying, hey, we want to promote, and uh, we'll get you a spot on our Pouring Glory episode uh, for this event. Again, that is going to be this Saturday, starting at 11, going till 8 o'clock. And we're also going to have the Fort Worth, uh, I believe, Humane Society out there. They're going to have some uh, adoption doggos uh, there with them that I uh, believe you can take home with you. But it's going to be a good event. If you have not been out to Pouring Glory yet, they have amazing food. They win awards all the time for their uh, hamburgers. Uh, but, you know, the food is, is kind of secondary to the reason I go there. I really like the people out there. Scott and his team are just really good people. And uh, there's a great vibe there, nice little spot. And they have a huge dog-friendly patio uh, that you can take advantage of any day of the week. But on Sundays, they have Dog Park Sunday. They shut all the gates, and you can let your doggo associate uh, or mill around with other local fur babies. So that's always fun. Today's episode is with Michael Perez and Teresa Davis out at the Fort Worth Nature Center in Refuge. We talk a little bit about the Nature Center and the Fort Worth Library's uh, summer reading program. It's a quick episode, but chocked full of interesting facts about a place that, if you haven't checked it out yet, you got to go. It's located off of 199, uh, just coming out of Fort Worth, and way before you get to uh, Azle on the right-hand side there, just kind of off of uh, Confederate Parkway, if you're familiar with that. Anyway, just north of Fort Worth, they've got bison uh, out there that I keep wanting to call buffalo, uh, but they're not. They're bison. And uh, just lots of really cool exhibits out there, and they've always got something interesting and entertaining geared towards uh, educating the kiddos and uh, just having a good time and being out in nature. All the information we cover in these episodes is listed in the show notes. If you'd like a full list of our sponsors or you want to see who's been practicing their music here at the Fort Worth Roots studio, you can go to our website. We've got drop-down menus where you can see all of them. It's easier to see on your PC, but you can find it on your phone. It's just not as streamlined. You can go to fortworthroots.com, and we've got all that information there for you. Thank you all for being here. That's enough talking out of me, and let's start the show. I'm here with Michael Perez at the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. How's it going, Andrew? What's going on, Michael? Thanks for doing this with us, oh, man. Oh, yeah. We're excited about this. What is uh, what is today's thing? What are we doing out here? Well, today is uh, we refer to as Literacy Day. Yeah. Uh, we collaborate with the Fort Worth Public Library uh, to promote literacy. Most people think the Fort Worth Nature Center, we're concerned with, and we are, with uh, preserving natural resources and education. Uh, but we also feel that literacy is very important. And literacy is actually is a great way to learn more about wildlife and to be more informed so we can make more inf uh, better informed uh, decisions when it comes to preserving and protecting wildlife. Mm -hmm. So uh, literacy is a, a great component uh, to what we have going on here at the Nature Center. Um, not only today, but also with some of our programs, especially our pre-K programs. We have a program called Preschool Discovery Club, and uh, we promote literacy through storytelling and so forth. So, again, today's Literacy Day, and we're excited about it and want everybody to know about it. I noticed coming in from the, the front gate uh, shack that you got up there, the attendant, and then coming forward out here to the uh, interpretive center, you've got a lot of signage everywhere, kind of telling 
the story. So literacy would be very important in that regard. Yes. So uh, we're, we have kiosks all across the property, basically promoting or not necessarily promoting, but just sharing information about, uh, various aspects of the nature center. We have signage and interpretive, uh, signage that's discussing the bison, the importance of bison and the role that they have here, as well as, uh, pollinators, uh, just showing us, educating the public about the habitats, like our cross timbers habitat, and also showcasing some of our areas like Greer Island, which is essentially where the Nature Center started back in 1964. That's one of the questions I wanted to ask you about. A little little history behind this place, because it's a, uh, it's 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 got a, a barrage of different events that happened that kind of created this place, right? I mean, oh, certainly. Uh, the Nature Center has worn many, many hats right. over the years. So essentially what how we were started back in 1914, Lake Worth was constructed. Uh, what, the whole point of uh, Lake Worth was to provide, you know, water, drinking water for uh, the city of Fort Worth and mm-hmm. the, the greater Fort Worth area. So whenever they constructed Lake Worth, they basically took all the land that was around Lake Worth where they constructed it in order to protect that particular watershed. They didn't want to develop it so that the water source would be, you know, messed up. for Polluted, any contaminated. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then uh, a few years later, back in the early 30s, Eagle Mountain was constructed as well. And the same thing happened there where they collected all the land around it, uh, which encompasses 3,600, uh, well, at the time, uh, 3,620 something, 30 something acres. Um, we've got that, more. That's Eagle Mountain? Not just, that's all the nature center. That's the oh, land collected around okay, okay. Lake Worth and Eagle Mountain. So over 3,600 acres. Wow. And uh, so that's kind of how we got started. Now, that land from the you know 30s on was basically not really used uh, for recreational activities at all. In fact, a lot of, several of the activities included uh, leasing out the land to local ranchers. Uh, we've also had land utilized uh, for uh, from the or utilized by the Civilian Conservation Corps, which they came out and constructed trails and uh, picnic tables, latrines, and and structures like that. So they've been involved with the Nature Center, uh, as well as the Nature Center was used uh, for individuals who once battled uh, some substance abuse. So there was an area there that was a rehab farm. So a lot of different hats were worn. However, in 1964, the 60s is kind of considered the golden age of, of nature centers, if you will. And in 1964, a group of uh, member, uh, members of the Fort Worth Audubon Society went to Park Board multiple times saying, hey, we need to use this for more recreational activities. And the Park Board um, ultimately would turn that down multiple times. But with their persistence, they kept coming back. And then the Park Board said, okay, fine. <laughs> All right. We heard you. We li- okay, we're going to give you a couple hundred acres uh, on the southeast part of the property known as Greer Island. Okay. So it became the Greer Island Nature Center. And uh, it was actually uh, volunteers and actually staffing from what is now considered the Fort Worth Museum of Natural History would actually staff it along with volunteers. And school groups would come out. They'd drive on the island. They'd be dropped off, and they would be led on the trails by docents and volunteers. People would hike, and paddle there in the area where the, where the water is there. And the city kind of thought, wow, maybe we're on to something here. Mm-hmm. So when all those l- ranches, those leases were expiring, they didn't renew them. Okay. To kind of recollect the land and get that 3,600 acres to use now for uh, recreational activities. Mm-hmm. And then this building here where we're located, Andrew, the Interpreter Center was built, uh, constructed in the early 70s. And from that point on, it's just, you know, just moved, you know, started using, doing uh, programming, uh, incorporating land management practices out here, too. Uh, so that's kind of the history and how we got started. So uh, for those of you out there, you have a cause, you, you want to support something, my advice to you and hear the, hear the voices of the individuals who are out here to start the nature center. Keep plugging on, keep plugging on if you have a cause. And through your persistence, your patience, good things may come. Yeah. And that's the only only way that this place exists is through the persistence of other people that just wouldn't let it go. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Until the, finally the government, the local government's like, here, 200 here. acres. Fine. <laughs> yeah, do whatever you want with that. <laughs> and it just snowballed from there. Yes, sir. What are some of the primary functions uh, of y'all's organization out here? 
what I really appreciate about the Fort Worth Nature Center, which makes us a little more unique than some nature centers around our area as well as the country, is we incorporate both education and land management. We think both that's part of our mission is to educate the community while performing um, land management practices um, to preserve the land and maintain the land. Okay. So primary functions on the education side, I'm the education director here and I have a staff of naturalists who lead programs and education programs. So we do a number of things. We lead hikes. As a matter of fact, right now we have a, uh, a program called early birds. It's usually on a uh, first Monday of the month where we take uh, folks on trails and just identify birds, talk about the importance of birds and identify oh, them. Cool. So we do that. We do lots of different hikes, uh, uh, we do paddling programs. We do a couple of about four a month, two of them during the day where they're guided, where you go out in the waters of Trinity River and learn about the local wildlife and the flora. And then we do one at night as well. It's under the light of the full moon, aptly named the full moon paddle. <laughs> and uh, we take folks out at night. And I know many, many. Maybe some of you listening right now like, wow, you, you, you sure about that? We want to go paddling <laughs> on the water at night? And I, too, had my reservations. But after doing it, uh, number one, the moon provides uh, a lot of a source of light. So you actually, at times, you're kind of covering your eyes. It's that bright. Wow. Okay. But uh, it's a really great experience to hear the sights, uh, the sights and sounds uh, or hear the sounds and see the sights uh on the water that it gives cool. you a different perspective in fact uh we had one individual andrew where i said i just made a blanket statement where i said uh y'all should you know uh entertain the idea of coming seasonally mm -hmm. like, come out in the summer come out in the fall come in spring come in and uh in winter just to see what it's like the different seasons as the seasons change so yeah. she heard that and what she heard was Oh, well, then I will come every month. <laughs> and she, I'm not kidding you, she came every month for almost uh, two, two and a half years. Wow. Every month she was there. And <laughs> uh, it's a cool experience. And then the fourth uh, paddling experience we offer is the third Sunday of every month. It's called Canoe Fest, where we just get all the canoes and kayaks out. And it's self-guided, but we have uh, some direction there, and you get on the water and just paddle freely. I've done it once, um, okay. and it was awesome. Yeah. It, you know, just come out. Uh, I think we were probably on the water for an hour, maybe. Yeah, and that's that's really all you need just to fun. experience yeah. it. So we do all those uh, types of programs. We have summer camps. In fact, uh, tomorrow starts our first summer camp. So we offer summer camps for uh, students entering kindergarten through fifth grade. And they're combined K1, 2, and 3, 4, 4, and 5th. And it's just an experience where they're outside, you know, hiking on trails, learning about different aspects of nature. And it's fun. The kids love it. We get a lot of kids to come back from summer to summer. Um, but gosh, just lots of education programs. And I haven't even touched on land management. <laughs> uh, and we do a lot of land management, uh, like uh, invasive plant removal we do prescribed burns out here uh, where we actually uh, burn some of the prairie uh, habitats out here in order to encourage uh, uh, the nutrients to go down the soil to pr uh, produce a, a better forb for all the wildlife mm -hmm. as well as uh, keep the, the woody species at bay so we can maintain prairie habitat for wildlife. And then lastly, it's a safety issue because we're reducing the fuel load for uh and we have houses on the on the nature center property so again it's a safety issue so uh it's an important ecological important land management practice that we implement here and then we also do you know, i said uh, invasive species removal and all sorts of projects we have grad students come out doing research projects out here we have a gentleman out here from the university of nebraska out here working on the lizards mm. uh, you just there's always something going on and that's what's really cool about this place nice you say invasive species, and the first thing that pops into my head is grackles. <laughs> Y'all got grackles out here? You know, we really don't get grackles out here. Those are city here. birds. Those right? are city birds, yeah. <laughs> yeah, city birds. Uh, we do get, and those are mostly the great tail grackles. Uh, we do get common grackles out here, which are not, again, they don't overtake the place. It, yeah. So we don't have that issue. So invasives for us is a Chinese privet. That's kind of our big one. Is that and a bug? It's a it's a tree. It's a oh, plant. Okay. So yeah, Chinese privet's a plant that comes that, that has come here and it's spread out and it's it grows in shade, it grows in sun and basically shades out all will take you know, shades off the sun for all of our native plants that are below it yeah. and kills those off and then of course that affects the wildlife that use those plants as a host for, you know, their everyday 
life. So then that disperses them and affects them in a negative way. So we actually have volunteers, not only staff, but volunteers who come out called Natural Guard. And they'll actually come in and remove uh, the invasive plants as much as they can. And what does that entail? People just walking around looking for these things and pulling them out of the ground? Well, uh, they walk around and you can throw a rock and hit a privet out here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's in certain areas, it's very dense. Uh, so yeah, we take them out to where the privet is. We have tools and they just remove remove as much as they can. Uh, unfortunately, across the North Texas area, it, it is affecting a lot of nature centers and natural areas. And you almost have to, to the point where it throw, wave the, the white flag in a sense that keeping it at bay, so just trimming it, keeping it where it is, because it, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah, but, uh, we're going to get rid of all of it. It's, it's going to be very hard to do that. What are some attractions and activities people have been missing out on if they have not visited the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge? Well, Literacy Day, you know, <laughs> we got Literacy Day today, but there are a lot of uh, events and uh, attractions we have. I just mentioned uh, just a number of programs we have for, for the public camp, summer camp, paddling, hiking. But we also do events. Uh, we have an event uh, in the fall called Trails and Treats where we invite, you know, people to come out, kids come out with their costumes and hike the trails for candy and then learn about the local wildlife. Uh, Lake Worth Monster Bash is a big event we have in the fall as well, which commemorate, commemorates the uh, Lake Worth Monster, the Goat Man that we have here at the Nature I Center. I wanted to ask you about that, and <laughs> I'm going to ask Matthew Broyles if we can dub in his uh, Lake Worth Monster song. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so we have that going on, as well as other events. Uh, this past spring, we have uh, we did uh, an event called NatureCon. It it kind of ties into Earth Day, so mm -hmm. we have lots of uh, local. Um, organizations uh, that came out and had booths and just engaged with the public. We had hiking, paddling, and so we have a lot of events like that. Uh, in addition to our everyday uh, activities, we always offer something. We have a guided hike or a themed program or of some sort going on here. That's awesome. Well, we gotta we got to talk about the Lake Worth Monster now. Of course. Do you, do you remember the full story? Well, uh, back in 1969, there was a half man, half goat that was... Uh, <laughs> "Quote unquote terrorizing uh, the the public that would come and visit uh, Greer Island area, where the claims were he throw tires at uh, cars and jump on cars and so forth." That law firm right there was the club that we played back in '19. Christ, you were in the fourth grade, and the girl who book shows there makes movies in Austin today. So come on now, let's play in the shack by the river it used to have bras in all the rafters And the halfway house calls out the next inmate number I sip on my whiskey and pray That I'll make it through one more day And I traveled this town From the bars to the parks And I've heard it make promises To me in the dark And it lies just like I do But it loves all the mess that we make I am the monster who lives by the lake and it caused a big frizzy to the point where local news stations, uh, I know one in particular, WFAA Channel 8 News, came out and did a report on it. Uh, folks came out and tried to hunt down the goat man. And, uh, it was like a weekend activity, right? Oh, People yeah. Get off work on Friday, they'd bring hey. a six pack of beer and they'd go out there and try to. Let's go look for the goat man. The goat man. <laughs> yeah, so it was a very interesting and a chaotic uh, time for those who remember that, that, that period, but. Uh, it caused a big frenzy, and to this day, uh, Goatman hasn't been spotted yet. You know, uh, that's my goal before retirement. I want to meet the Goatman. <laughs> I think if I can meet him, that that's you know, drop the mic. I'm done. I'm retiring. You know, enjoyed uh, enjoyed my time. Yeah, we, we we catch up with you later, and you got a big old tire mark across your forehead. We'll know what happened. <laughs> yeah, if it says Firestone, a good year on the side of my my head. <laughs> um, all right. How is the Fort Worth uh, Nature Center and Refuge getting involved with the Fort Worth Library in the summer reading program? We we love collaborating. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that uh, working with other departments is very important because we get to share our message and who we are to others who have established um, membership or viewership and visit those who visit. And I think it's a it's benefits both collaboration benefits both organizations and uh, again uh, 
we feel literacy is very, very important. So uh, tying up with the, or collaborating with the Forward Library has been wonderful. We've not only done, started this Literacy Day uh, starting last year, but during COVID, one of the things that we did was uh, we did uh, like preschool classes for the public where um, Angela Barrett and uh, would read a story and then I would come in with a video talking a little bit about a various topic at that month. We did that for a little bit. We visit, you know, we try to visit the libraries as well and offer free programs to the, to the local libraries. We do, we're doing that this summer as well. Each month we go to a certain library and we're just going to try to visit as many as we can. We have uh, this event going on as well. So um, we, we just, we love partnering with uh, the library. We have a great relationship, both program-wise and professional. You know, I've served on interview panels uh, for their staff, and we'll definitely invite them to do do that for us as well. So there's a good uh, a friendship and relationship that's really solid and rooted in literacy and uh, educating the public. That's excellent. I meant to ask you this whenever we first got started, but what is your position out here, and, and what do you do on a daily basis out here at the Nature Center? Well, my position uh, with the city uh, is a natural, I'm the natural scientist supervisor, basically AKA education director out here. So I'm in charge of the educational programs here at the Nature Center, as well as the education staff. So that uh, means uh, putting together a calendar of, of, of events for the public and it's, um, you know, Facebook promotion, promoting programs, leading programs like my early birds hike. That's a program that I usually do. And then um, we have staff who lead the uh, paddling program. So watching, you know, just again, guiding and directing the education staff and uh, putting out a very diverse um, menu of programs for the community. So, Excellent. And there's some paperwork in there, oh, yeah. and, you know, all that fun <laughs> stuff. But, uh, but being outside, you know, getting the, uh, getting folks outside and learning about what we have here uh, is very important because this is such a gem out here. Um, the trails we have and just the different habitats. And it's so close. I think I mentioned to you, I thought I was going to be running severely late this morning, but it is so much closer than I even remembered it being. It's yeah. it's right outside the city. Yeah, it really is. We're on the northwest part of Fort Worth between Lake Worth and Azel off of Jacksboro Highway. But it's, you know, it's pretty close. It's not too bad from, you know, from downtown and, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, um, again, uh, easy driving distance for the public. But once you get out here, I mean, there's no signs of city life in anywhere around us. I mean, no. we're, we're in nature now. Exactly. We're, yes. Do you know how many uh, hiking trails you all have out here? Uh, we have a little over 10 hiking trails. We actually just started. Uh, we'll have a new one that we actually will be able to showcase in a couple, maybe about a month. And that encompasses over about 20 miles of trails. So we get... Uh, like Boy Scout groups come out and mm -hmm. hike uh, the trails in uh, en route to or you know prepping for Philmont or any other hiking engagement they have. So we have some very easy trails that are flat, and then we have some that will get your heart heart going. Advanced. Yeah, I brought my boots today just in case. Oh, those are perfect. You can yeah. get on that Canyon Ridge Trail easily with those. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> Excellent. Do y'all have any programs or uh, projects that you're working on, kind of in the horizon that people can look forward to out here at the Refuge Center? We uh, just completed two. Uh, we actually um, have a project that was completed. It's done. It's a, a construction of a viewing deck, mm -hmm. which actually at the at the height it goes up to like 18 feet high and it overlooks the bison pastures. Oh, two of the cool. bison pastures. That so, so cool. You can see the bison from a distance. Uh, so that's really cool. And what kid doesn't want to just climb up on a you know an tall incline? Structure. Exactly. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> and then uh, we are uh, wrapping up um, our boardwalk project uh, and. If you, for those of you who've been to the nature center, there's like one uh, boardwalk uh, piece of it that juts out over the water with a covered pavilion on it. Well, right now what they what they've completed is they've connected uh, two more segments of boardwalk that would connect you back to land. So it kind of essentially forms like a, a horseshoe or a U, and that's what it has been historically. So we add parking lot, uh, parking lot there. So more parking. We've actually added some uh, bus lanes. So when we do school groups out here, we have places where you can uh, park buses. There's a big picnic area there. There's a restroom, and then an addition, uh, additional one mile trail. So that's a awesome. project. And then we have other, we have projects that we would love to have going on in the future. Um, one in particular is uh, Broadview Park. It's it's a section actually where a lot of CCC. Uh, structures are mm -hmm. and it overlooks the city it's a it's a beautiful area so yeah we we definitely want to enhance the the nature center uh and 
continue to build new amenities for the public to mm-hmm. draw them out here. If this is not enough of a draw out here right here, uh, that'll definitely get people wanting to come out. Yeah. That's the second time you brought up the CCC, and I just went on a trip and visited five different state parks <laughs> and learned a little bit about the CCC. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that uh, that group was responsible for a lot of... of uh, uh, buildings and structures and new developments at state parks and I yes. I didn't I didn't know that they touched things like this but also built some some stuff out here too yeah um, so the CCC is uh, was basically a program that was created by uh, FDR in the early 30s um, to combat uh, the Great Depression so it gave gentlemen between the ages of roughly 18 to 25 jobs where they would go out to state parks national parks and so forth and do work and pres- and enhance these state parks and national parks where uh, the, the CC boys would get about $30 a month but 25 went to mom <laughs> yeah so I got to keep five but they would camp out at the locations for example our group which is Camp Adams which was uh, 18. 1816 camp 1816 they were at casino beach but then they had like a sub camp that was right here on the property so that it gave them gave them greater access easier access to construct uh their do their work here at the nature center yeah and they constructed trails picnic tables culverts and they're still existing all the stonework still exists on various parts of the property Mm -hmm. and this saturday we just actually re well not this saturday but we received a what what's called a ccc worker statue and uh, it's basically a statue that goes in places like the Nature Center that had a heavy CCC influence. And a gentleman by the name of Steve Porter uh, from the uh, Austin area uh, donated this statue, and it was erected here um, on Saturday. Oh, that is so cool. And it's the second one in the state of Texas. No. So the, wow. the first one was in, is at White Rock Lake, I believe, in that area. But he donated it. It was constructed because Saturday was uh, National Trails Day. Okay. So you missed out, you know, I sorry, I didn't yeah. get, you didn't get your national Trail Day <laughs> card. I'm, I apologize. It's still in the mail, <laughs> but, uh, it's the first Saturday of every June. Now, where is that statue located here at the nature center? It's located at a refuge service center. So if you come onto the property, uh, pay your admission or show your member, your, your member pass and you make a right and you follow that road on the right side of the road, that's where our land management operations uh, okay. is centered. And it's, been placed at the entrance to what we refer to as Broadview Park, which again is a beautiful area with a lot of CCC structures. And it's just mounted there. We'll get a plaque there. And again, it was really cool. We had uh, District 7, the newly minted District 7 Councilwoman Macy Hill out here, as well as CCC representation and uh, City of Fort Worth staff out here just doing a little, you know, yeah. um, dedication. That's awesome. And they man. appreciate it. And then Mr. Porter came all the way down and was a big part of it. So, so is the CCC still in operation? Yes. Uh, really? Well, they have a, a local group. To, uh, I can't tell you the exact name. They actually meet here, too. Oh, really? I believe it's the second Saturday of the month. Uh, a gentleman named, by the name of Mr. Mike Pixler, he's he's a president of the local legacy group. And they still have meetings and, uh, you know, try to continue to have that out there. People to know about what they did and how important they were to to us as well as all the other state parks and national parks that where they were involved yeah. with. Such so. a cool program. It you know, is. Reading about that, I was I was pretty proud of the uh, that group of guys getting out there and, and building all these things that we're still enjoying today at our state parks yeah. and yeah. places like this. So we've covered all of my my serious questions. I had one question I threw in at the the bottom of this email. So for our listeners, what what uh what what occurred here in this email thread is Teresa Davis had sent me some information and asked me to prepare some questions for Michael, and at the very bottom I made sure that I squeezed in. Can we go talk to the bison now? <laughs> you can mo- You're more than welcome to go and talk to the bison. <laughs> they're they're always listening. Um, we have a her. I think we're at 22 right now. Three calves that are born uh, this uh, this summer, and we do a you know gear program towards them because they are an attraction and we do bison feed and hay rides typically on uh, the holidays like spring break winter break um, memorial day we had one and you can talk to them Mm -hmm. in fact you have to talk to them to get them to come to you because sometimes they're in the heat of the day they're behind all the trees so you have to talk to them and and i'll holler at them and try to get them to come and they'll just come running out of trees and i just yell up (laughs) 
up and they listen. They're really good listeners. I need to talk to my kids, you know? I mean, they're, they're really, <laughs> take, some, take some pointers, from take the some bison. pointers from the bison. So you're more than welcome to stop by and see if you can uh, spot the bison and, uh, you know, get them on the podcast and get them, you know, grunting. Try to snap some photos yeah, for sure. Yeah, see yeah. if I can make friends. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Michael, thank you so much for doing this. And, uh, since now you've been on the Fort Worth Roots podcast, if you ever, f uh, find any kind of segue for us to get involved and help you guys out or just do some interviews, uh, let me know. Oh yeah. We've loved it. Very this cool. has been, this has been really fun. Awesome. All right, Michael, thank you. All right, and, thank you. Uh, hope to see you again soon. All right. Sounds good. All right. Y'all come out and visit us. Thanks folks. Now the real interview starts. Teresa Stop. Davis, the Fort Worth Public Library. How are you today? I am great. We It is a beautiful morning out here at the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. And I already saw a deer. You said you saw a whitetail on the I way in? I did. So, um... I didn't see anything. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I know you and Francisco are going to get out and about. and. We're on the hunt for the great brown bison. There we go. I wanted to say the great white buffalo, but that's not what's out here. <laughs> no. So, uh, summer reading program with the Fort Worth Library. Absolutely. This is uh, one of our kind of kickoffs. So, you know, summer reading is about creating really fun activities and, uh, you know, getting people and kids excited about exploring new things because in the summer you get to explore and read for fun with whatever you want to do. So, if we get them out mm -hmm. here and they're excited about the trails and the bisons and the birds they get to see then check out some books on those types of things yeah. so we've uh, got a summer full of exciting collaborations uh well, throughout it's, fort worth. it's it's a good uh project the two of y'all the nature center and fort worth library because um there is a lot of reading to do out here <laughs> i mean i've i've probably done more reading this morning than i have in the past couple of weeks just on my way from the gate to here and reading things at the interpretive center here and Oh, this is a great exhibits and yeah. whatnot. So, <laughs> well, you know, we we love partnering with the Nature Center and Refuge, and we did. Um, we started back uh, in the pandemic when um, they weren't able to have their story times here anymore, right? Right. And we kind of took the Discovery Kids, the Discovery Club um, Kids time, and went two and a half years uh, with uh, our YouTube program that we collaborated mm -hmm. with them on. And it really just solidified that this just makes sense, you know, when, when great city departments can get together and do more for our residents. And so we, we love working with this team here. That's what Teresa's all about, man. You're Collaboration. The, you're the connecting tissue in our city's <laughs> department. <laughs> you keep saying that. It makes me sound like a ligament. I don't know. <laughs> kind of weird. Teresa Davis, our favorite ligament. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this summer we've got so much more going on, too. We've got um, guest readers. You know, a lot of city leaders are stepping in and stepping up uh, for the Mayor's Summer Reading Challenge and, and coming out and reading at li libraries all over the city. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, storybook characters who are going to make appearances and anything to kind of get that excitement going with these families and, and let them know we've got a summer full of fun for everyone. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So what can people do to... Um learn more about this well of course you're going to go to the library's website um follow us on all the socials because you know we've got a great team that keeps uh everything posted and and all the fun stuff we get to do and showing off all the the fun activities we get to do and uh, readers recommendations all that kind of stuff on our social media but uh, fortworthlibrary.org will bring you to all the great news any other awesome updates about the fort worth library since we're here? Well, we are gearing up for a grand opening of the Vivian J. Lincoln Library. Uh, it will be in District 6. It's uh, far southwest. Okay. So it's uh, McCart and Reisinger. And that is going to be July 8th. And it will be a wonderful event. Um, it is a gorgeous library. We are so thrilled to be able to offer this library there. We, it was a really collaborative process with the community on what they wanted out of their library. Mm -hmm. And it's really unique. It's unlike pretty much architecturally any of the other ones we have because that community said they didn't want a big glass box, mm -hmm. right? They wanted something that reflected the nature in the area. Um, there's beautiful, beautiful public art that's been installed. There's a trail out there. I know you like your trails. I love me some trails. Um, <laughs> we've built out a, a trail uh, around the library that because in, in those neighborhoods, they don't have lots of sidewalks and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So a place where the community can go. But July 8th uh, at 9.30 in the morning, because it's going to be warm, <laughs> but uh, we'll be out there opening the Vivian J. Lincoln Library, and we're just thrilled. We're so excited. That's so cool. You know what it really needs? Tell me. A podcaster. <laughs>
Well, it's already got Bumpersaurus. Now, what, what's a Bumpersaurus? <laughs> so Bumpersaurus is a really uh, popular attraction okay. uh, that was formerly at the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. Mm-hmm. Um, they donated it to the library, and it's currently at the downtown location, but uh, since the downtown location will be closing uh, on the 30th of June, we're moving Bumpersaurus to the Vivian J. Lincoln Library out okay. in the children's patio and children's area, and it is a dinosaur, a big purple dinosaur that has actually a slide that you can slide down and it is made out of car parts motorcycle parts and actual like bumper car parts which is why he got his name bumper saurus you need a tetanus shot for this slide (laughs) no 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 it's totally (laughs) safe it's totally safe um and it's 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 going to be another fun attraction at the lincoln library that's really cool well if you need a podcaster well i i I think i got your number for you yeah always Thank well, you so much for having me out. Hey, Appreciate it. We're glad you're here, and I can't wait to see uh, you uh, call the bison. Yeah. So I guess that's the next step, right? I'm looking at Francisco right now. All right. Let's the giddy great, up. The hunt for the not great white buffalo, the great brown bison. Let's see if you find some prairie dogs and some other. Uh, there's a gator inside. Did you Did you go see the baby gator? I haven't looked at the exhibits in there yet, right. but I need to. All right. We'll take some pictures of that, too. All right. Anything else for the people's listenings? Hey, just have fun this summer. All right. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right. A huge thank you to Michael Perez and Teresa Davis. Michael is with the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge, and Teresa Davis is with the Fort Worth Public Library, and she also heads up Amplify 817, which is another really interesting program put on by our city uh, that I'm extremely excited about. We can't stop talking about Amplify 817 because they do a lot for our musicians. They do a lot for Fort Worth, and it's amazing that our city is uh, standing behind our local creators. So why would you not want to support Amplify 817, a branch of the Fort Worth Library? library very cool stuff thank you michael thank you Teresa. this was an honor just to be included in something like this is a huge pat on the back it it's sincerely an honor thank you so much i hope to do more with the fort worth nature center uh and the fort worth library you people are the best hope you all enjoyed that episode seriously go out there and check this place out um i got in free that day because i was like i was with the band you know i was working the the background magic so i uh i got a chance to go out there and not have to pay nothing so i wasn't paying attention to how much it costs but it's not going to break the bank it's definitely one of the cheapest things you can do with your kiddos this summer um and by many measures maybe one of the most interesting things you can do uh if you're watching the video on youtube for this episode i got a bunch of shots of the bison out there and uh some of the other things we're doing walking around there um with Francisco and just kind of checking the place out. So uh, if you want to sneak peek, you can go to the YouTube uh, channel, Fort Worth Roots, and uh, click on episode 146, and you'll see some some video we took out there. Uh, But uh, there's an easier way to do it if you're here in Fort Worth. Just travel up 199, and uh, I don't know that the exit is marked for it. You can look it up on the the Internet, on the uh, navigation, just Fort Worth Nature Center. Uh, but right as you get to Confederate Parkway, and I think that exit is marked off of 199, just north of uh, town, before you get to Azel, uh, on the right-hand side. So, anyway, go check it out. Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. Just lots of cool stuff out there. And uh, watch out for the goat man. I'm going to try to see if... Uh, y- you'll already know by now, but I'm going to contact Matthew Broyles and see if I can dub in his track. He has a whole song about the Lake Worth monster. So that would be cool. Anyway, lots of good stuff. Shout out to our sponsors. Of course, uh, I was talking about pouring. (laughs) Jesus. I was talking about pouring glory in our event that we got coming up this weekend, this Saturday, uh, June 24th, starting at 11 o'clock. Come on out. We're going to be podcasting, eating some good food, playing with the uh, Fort Worth Humane Society doggos, and just making a whole day out of it. We'll be there from 11 to 8. So, you know, I'm just kind of busting this on you uh last minute but you you didn't have to plan for this yeah i'll be there all day you stop in for five minutes or you can hang out with me all day whatever you want to do uh but the food's incredible if you haven't had that and uh i'll be there so (laughs) what else do you need really okay pouring glory 101001 bryan avenue fort worth texas just off of south main street and i-35 one block north of rosedale Pouring Glory is a growler refilling station that serves craft beer and award-winning food with live music. They do have live music all there. Excuse me. They do have live music there all the time. A little stage out there that uh, 
Scott has been working on. There's going to be some shade attached to that thing now, which is excellent, especially in these summer months. For our musician friends, Denver Williams is out there quite a bit. I know I saw Joe Savage not too long ago. Uh, man, I, can, I can't just list off all the musicians that have been out there. It's a lot, and it's multiple times a week. So check that out. Body Machine Fitness, uh, still trying to... <laughs> Still trying to get out there on a regular basis. I've been ma averaging kind of once a week. I need to up that game there. I do love going out there. It's just, man, my schedule, being an adult and stuff. The good thing about this place is I don't have to worry about keeping track of a workout routine or anything like that. They do it for me. So I walk in there. I've made the commitment. The hardest part is just getting there. And then the 45-minute class that is led by some incredible just beasts of humans, uh, does that make sense? Is that even a word? Uh, amazing people that know what they're doing. And uh, so they, they take charge. They tell you what to do. And whenever you leave, you feel accomplished. The next day you feel a little sore. But it's a good way to get in a very complete workout. Again, that's Body Machine Fitness. They're located at 2300 West 7th Street in Fort Worth. That's uh, over there by Crumble Cookie and Buffalo Wild Wings in the uh, Left Bank Shopping Center, I think is what it's called. They offer a truly one-of-a-kind fitness experience. Your first class has already been paid for. That's true. Go to bodymachinefitness.com to schedule your first high-energy cardio strength group fitness class with best-in-industry trainers. Cutting-edge audio and lighting system. Show up early or stay after the class for the IR sauna and nutritious snacks in the lobby. And then after you're done taking care of your body, it's time to have fun. Let's head over to McFly's Pub. This place is pretty dope. It's a uh, Back to the Future theme place. And just like Pouring Glory, they've got live music all the time. They have an incredible outdoor uh, area. These are on different sides of town, though. There's no competition here. Pouring Glory is over there uh, on the other side of downtown. And then McFly's is over here by the military base. And you got to check both these places out. McFly's uh, has cornhole and a disc golf basket with those uh, putter discs out there so you can throw around uh, but just lots of space very cool vibe great people and uh, very interesting uh, artwork all over the place by local muralists and um, just goodies that they've accumulated over the years hanging from the walls and on the shelves and stuff it's, just, it's a fun place they got a pool table darts I think they have darts I need to check on that they got that little ring toss thingy you know string hangs from the ceiling toss the ring try to get it on the hook it's a fun place. They got pinball, too. Okay, McFly's. Go check that out. What else? Where are we at? Come on, Andrew. Get it together. All right. Woodpostmetalworks.com. Offer code PODCAST817 on checkout. We'll get you 10% off. They specialize in metal signs with or without LED backlighting, fence and gate repair, or installation, light steel fabrication, industrial plasma coating, and more. They do a lot of stuff around town. If you've been driving through Fort Worth and seen any signs hanging off the front of these buildings, there's a pretty good chance these people made it. And uh, they do really good work. And I just found out recently that uh, they're probably one of the most reasonably priced places that you can get something like that. So check them out, woodpostmetalworks.com. Don't forget, use Poet Podcast 817 at checkout. What is wrong with me today? Hawkwalker Originals, go to hawkwalker.com. They offer a huge variety of unique and personalized gifts. Also laser engraving to customize just about anything you can think of. Yeah, need something customized for the office or the home, uh, laser engraving and whatnot, do it here. Don't you dare get it on uh, Amazon or whatever. Let's, uh, let's keep Fort Worth dollars in Fort Worth pockets and uh, show these people some love. Go check out what they got, haukwalker.com. Roofing Solutions by Darren Hauk. I mentioned this last episode. I was uh, So it would have been last Sunday. I'm recording the outro uh, for last week's episode, and I'm getting pictures from a very good friend of mine in uh, Weatherford. And she's sending me these pictures. And these hailstones are not only huge, but they look angry. They got teeth on them. And so there is a pretty good chance that some people sustained some hail damage. I hope it wasn't you. But it doesn't matter if it was or not. You know it's probably time for a roofing tune-up. We talk about this on the show a lot. You get 50% off of a roofing tune-up. This is something that typically costs $500. You get a roofer up on your roof. He checks all your pipe jacks and makes sure that the sealant hasn't gotten sun damaged and flaked off. They replace that. And while they're up there, they're also looking for signs of damage uh, that would result from these big, angry-looking hell sounds that blew in from Weatherford. Thanks a lot, Weatherford. Um, it's not their fault. I forgive you, Weatherford. Uh, anyway, get that roofer up there. And like I said, typically it costs 500 bucks. Darren, since... You are a listener of the Fort Worth Roots podcast, and Darren loves us. 
you get 50% off. So it's 250. Now, if he gets up there and he finds more damage than the roofing tune-up can fix, he'll just come off the roof. You don't owe him anything. He'll show you some pictures, tell you what the next step is, and uh, you can go for, go for, go from there. Excuse me. Roofing Solutions by Darren Howe. You can find it at roofingsolutionshop.com, or you can give him a call, 817-882-6520. All right. What is left? We've done all the stuff, haven't we? No. We need to talk about Cowtown Nutrition. It's our newest sponsor. They're located over here in River Oaks at 5430 River Oaks Boulevard. They offer a healthy alternative to that compulsory fast food craving that you might have. Uh, you can also load up on your favorite Herbalife products and learn about their fitness groups that they hold on location at Cowtown Nutrition. Get them on the Instagrams at Cowtown underscore nutrition and uh, stop by and try this stuff out. Uh, we're, we did an episode last week where April from Cowtown uh, Nutrition is, uh, she's in it, she's featured in it. She met us out there at the River Oak Spring Fest Car Show and did a recording with us and then after that became a sponsor. So um, anyway, there's already some information on that. We are going to put out a standalone Cowtown Nutrition sponsorship episode uh, with our friend April to learn a little bit more about that. And since she's a sponsor, she gets her own little sponsorship episode. We uh, release those uh, at different times than our Monday episode because it's a, it's a bonus. It's an extra. So, anyway, go check it out. Good stuff. Uh, the thing that uh, I meant to tell you we were talking about in that episode is I did the Herbalife thing for a little bit, and uh, after two weeks on that product, um, I'd done a before and after picture. And I'll go into more detail if you, you go listen to the episode. But anyway, we showed a friend, and uh, the guy was like, well, these, these pictures don't look that different. You just look like you're flexing in this one. And I wasn't flexing. We were very specific about how we took the pictures. Same time of day, and the guy that uh, was taking the pictures was, was coaching me on, like, how to do this. Like, okay, as soon as you get out of bed, no flexing. Just let your body hang, and we'll take these pictures. So he took the first picture, and it's like, whatever. And then two weeks later, on this product, uh, took another picture side by side. The two week later photo looked like I was flexing as hard as I could, and uh, I wasn't. I was just standing there in my uh, in my shorts. So anyway, it's a good product. I like it, and uh, I like Cowtown Nutrition more than I like the product. These people are nice folk. Uh, if you listen to the show for a while, I'm always telling you I want to find sponsors that we get along with, people that we like, products that we uh, can can get behind. So. Um, they fit the mold. They were the right pick. So, anyway, good deal. And you can go check them out. If you're driving through the River Oaks area, you can either get a shake there or sign up and uh, get the product delivered straight to your house. It's 5430 River Oaks Boulevard, and you can get them on Instagram at Cowtown underscore nutrition. Good stuff. Okay, that's all the sponsors. Now, listen to me. We're doing a thing. And I know you got a thing, right? You got a podcast or you got music. Maybe you're making a film. Whatever you're doing, whatever your creation is, come out and see me uh, June 24th at Pouring Glory, and we're going to put you on the roadcaster, and we're going to record with you. You don't have to uh, record with us, but we'd like you to. We'd like you to promote whatever you got going on. Uh, there's no restrictions on this. You know, Fort Worth Roots... Uh, has some restrictions on what's relevant for the show and what's not, but on uh, event coverage days, it's not so restrictive, such as last week's episode. My mom, my my dear mom, she uh, finally got her wish and got to be on the Fort Worth Roots podcast <laughs> because she was a she was a vendor at that event. So there's your relevancy. Um, anyway, so yeah, when we do these uh, event coverage things, it, you, everybody is welcome. So, and we open this one up to the entire DFW community. So it doesn't matter what city you're in or what you got going on. Come see me. It's going to be at Pouring Glory. Starts at 11 o'clock, and uh, there's going to be dogs there too from the uh, Fort Worth Humane Society. So, come see me. If you got any questions, you can DM me. You can email me media at fortworthroots.com. And if you'd like a guaranteed recording time, you can also uh, email me media at fortworthroots.com. We already have some people that are uh, scheduled to record with us, but. Uh, Depending on when you show up, in between 11 and 8 p.m., uh, we'll get you squeezed in there if we have time. I bet we'll have time. If i got to stay a little later, I'll do it too. All right, that's everything. Go to the Fort Worth Nature Center, read your books, eat your vegetables, and uh, come see me at Pouring Glory this weekend. 
That's it. That's all I got, folks. Thank you for listening, and we will see you next week or this weekend. Bye. That law firm right there Was a club that we played Back in 19 Christ You were in the fourth grade And the girl who books shows there Makes movies in Austin today So come on now Let's play in the shack by the river we Used to have bras In all the rafters and the halfway house calls out the next inmate number I sip on my whiskey and pray That I'll make it through one more day And I've traveled this town From the bars to the parks And I've heard it make promises to me in the dark And it lies just like I do But it loves all the mess that we make I am the monster who lives by the lake Our downtown used to be Dark as hell in the night Now it's all full of grackles Bright Christmas lights So I went down in the chat room So Taylor could fix me a drink And I sit down to think about all of those people Who've been good to me Even when I'm a bastard Even when I can't see And I try to believe them When they tell me that I'll be okay that I'll make it through one more day And I've traveled this town From the bars to the parks And I've heard it make promises To me in the dark And it lies just like I do But it loves all the mess that we make I am the monster who lives by the lake I'm driving up to Wings With polite little trees And I'm driving up north side Past cemeteries That remind me of how little Time that I've got left to be Whatever I'll be And I want to love all Of the people I love And I want to drink life from a big showdown cup And I don't want to leave all Of this damage I leave And the rent keeps on rising I wonder how long I can be A part of this big tapestry Seventh is changing. The dude bros run free and the bars on Magnolia. They don't want acts like me. But Leon is playing from a speaker somewhere down the street. The circle's complete, so good night to the woo girls. Good night to the bards and good night to the bass cops. Stars upon Mars and good night to the dreamers Wherever in town you may be Old 
young and all those yet to be And I've traveled this town From the bars to the parks And I've heard it make promises To me in the dark And it lies just like I do But it loves all the mess that we make I am the monster who lives by the lake I am the monster who lives by the lake I am the monster who lives by the lake